thank you very much, and thanks for uh, coming on a, feels like Friday. It's a Friday, but at least it's, uh, it's uh, pretty, I actually had a chance to get out and do a little bit of yard work t today. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is, I, I, I'm going to make, kind of go off script a little bit. My goal is that uh, when we're all said and done here, you're going to be looking at retirement as, as something you're just really excited about and getting really ready, ready to do. And this, uh, How to Retire Wild, Happy, and Free is the name of a book. We'll refer back to the book a little bit later. And uh, I'm going to really walk through, uh, uh, you know, over the years, a lot of discussions with a lot of people uh, that are getting ready to retire, that have retired, um, you know, reading, quite frankly, a lot of books, and then also my experience and uh, how I got to the point of uh, getting very, very comfortable with retirement. So that's, uh, that's kind of an overview of what we're going to cover here. And um, the journey, this is a fairly typical journey. Uh, as, as we talk with people, you read books, and I had a conversation uh, with, with uh, the, the um, HR director of a, a very large company uh, yester, or just the other day, and, and, and she reaffirmed this. So, so many of the, really, if, as many, of, if not most of the uh, pre-retiree, you know, pre-retirees, and they, they look at this journey of getting ready for retirement, or if you're in retirement, with, with a lot of apprehension, and the word was used yesterday by this HR director, uh, a lot of people are just really, quite frankly, there's a lot of fear. What the heck? Uh, it's, uh, it, it's what am I going to do? What's going to be my purpose in life uh, when I retire? What am I going to do when I get up in the morning? Um, you know, what, am I going to get, what's the phrase, fat, slovenly, and lazily, or lazy, or, or something like that? So there's, a, there's a real fear, especially for those who haven't really had a chance to, to really, really plan it out. And clearly the goal is to, to be really, really excited. And I would, I would submit to you, and what we're really going to talk about is that uh, if, if the, the other part of the journey, the fun part of the journey is you can get to the point, and I'm going to ho hopefully help you get there, is you get to the point where you say, I am ready to retire. I've got a lot to do. I'm ready, really ready to do this, and you've got a, a lot to look forward to. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, just a little bit of background. So on the polling results, I, f I find these kind of interesting. Clearly, 55% of the people are fear that they're going to get bored in retirement. Uh, you can see many people are worried about some of the financial aspects. Uh, but, but then if you fast forward or you go forward, 72% of the people who retired are, are, are ex happy to extremely happy. And, uh, and, and many of them, 92%, the vast majority obviously talk about, uh, are, are so happy about the additional flexibility, being able to, to a large degree to, to get a chance to do what you want to do. So the purpose of this slide is, is that a lot of people really go through this journey where they're worried about this, but when they, once they've experienced it, it's a pretty good thing. Um, I guess as a little bit of background, I've been retired now for about, about five and a half years. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a CPA. I manage the uh, Deloitte practice here. And uh, I clearly went, went, through, went through these stages. So maybe to put retirement, from my perspective, hopefully it's helpful to you, uh, into some perspective. Uh, there are a heck of a lot of mental aspects about retirement. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, some other things just so you consider, and then we'll move back to the uh, how to retire wild, happy, and free. But just so, so you understand, there are a lot of other things you've got to consider, and, and you probably have, and a lot of these are, are not going to be big surprises. Uh, I would tell you, and I would counsel all of you, is the number two item. We're not going to talk about it today, but you know, looking at your financial resources, I'm, I'm, I'm stating. But many people would say, and the way I state it, do you know your number? What's the number you need? to be able to, to do what you want to do over, the, over your lifetime. And so we're not going to cover that today, but I would tell you, if you don't have your number, figure out your number. And it's really not that hard to come up with. And maybe at, at some point in time, that'll be something that, that, well, it will be one of the things that the United Way will help you with if you need help with it. You got to know your number. Got to know your number. You're also going to run into other things that you have to consider as longevity risk. Um, uh, as you look to your number, uh, what a lot of people are doing are they're, they're underestimating the, uh, how long they're going to live. And they're underestimating, that's the good news. <laughs> but the bad news is it does have an impact on what your number is. So longevity list, you know, you talk about your parents, they all lived, uh, or, or grandparents lived 80, 85. Well, that's, that's probably now 90. So longevity risk, health and health uh, expense risk, that's a, that's a, a real, you know, that's a, a real concern. <laughs> 
Some things happen um, that you just don't anticipate. I broke a shoulder last March, and my wife managed to have to have a hip replacement and, and fell the, you know, about 12 weeks ago. So it happens. So uh, that is a concern. But you can get that into your projections pretty easily. Um, another thing is forced retirement risk. Um, sometimes you don't have a choice as to the timing. So uh, forced retirement risk. And then long-term care risk, uh, that's a hard one. Uh, I have some very strong beliefs on that, but uh, that's, that's a tough one. That is getting to be and getting uh, to be a, a, a tougher and tougher matter. So, so there's a lot of things to consider in retirement. We're going to talk about the first one. Um, so let's maybe we, we think a little bit about um, just, what it, just kind of getting your arms around this thing called retirement. And um, I, I would tell you, stating the obvious, that you really have to get a, you got to get a head start on this. As a matter of fact, I could argue that a lot of what we'll talk about now, a person can really start at 40, because it's a pretty good life plan, too. But you got to get an early start. If you don't have a good start on this by the time you retire or with, you're within a year of retirement, you're, you, you, you know, you're just not going to be as well off. Um, I found, talking with a whole bunch of people that retired, what they did right and what they did wrong, I learned a lot. So uh, talk with a lot of people. And I would say read and read and read a lot of books. Um, some are good and some are not so good. Barbara and I were just talking. I read some books because I was pretty nervous about retirement. I was truly in this category about what are you going to do when you get up in the morning? What's going to be your purpose? And I'd read a story about in one of the books about some person who always <coughs> met this group for breakfast and then all of a sudden after he retired for a month he realized these people are going to work and he was going home and he didn't have a purpose. And all that kind of got to be a little, little uh, depressing. Um, but, but there are some good books. Uh, this book that we'll, we're talking about is was really, quite frankly, one of the best. I'll refer to another book a little bit later. Um, sometimes you just don't control the timing, as I mentioned, so you kind of really ought to have a sense what color is your parachute. Um, there actually is a book out there that's pretty good that's called What Color is Your pa Parachute Related to uh, uh, Retiring. So uh, I would, s and I'd be happy to talk with you about other books that are good and some that I thought were not, yeah, perhaps not so good. Uh, but the key, the key is to, to, is to really build a plan. And I will tell you when we're done, I hopefully will get to, get to the point where building this plan and when you're done is really pretty fun. And uh, you, you'll really set yourself up. So building the plan, this is the way, this is the way I did it. And it, with the help of the book, it's uh, getting to that perfect state of mind. And I actually got there to say, you know, I need to retire. I got a lot of stuff to do, and, and I'm not getting any younger. And uh, I actually got to that point, and I'm going to refer to that to that moment, so to speak. But you can get there even if you're retired. You can, you know, you, if you're already retired, you can you can still sure do this. But um, I'd submit to you the way I did it was I started with something analogous to a um, a, re a retirement tree, and uh, you could also look at, and that's what's on the right. Uh, and you could also do it in a little different format. It could just be a list of things I want to, uh, what I want to do. And, and that's one of the formats that I have. As a matter of fact, I carry, there's my briefcases over there. I have carried my list with me for probably eight years. It's, it's in my briefcase. It's in a certain place. Whenever I got nervous about retiring or, or, or that, I would sometimes pull, pull that out. As a matter of fact, I pulled it out again besides doing this. And I got, I've got some things I've got to get started on. <laughs> one of which... Uh, I had on my t bucket list, I, we won't talk about One was to paint the garage. It's been six years and I haven't painted the garage. <laughs> and my wife is starting to get a, a little irritated about that. But you start to build a retirement, a retirement tree and, you, and you're going to be the one. I'll, give you, I'll use me as an example. Uh, you, you pick the number of branches and you pick the type of branches and you're going to name them. And I can tell you're going to have a heck of a good time doing it. You just got to give yourself a little time. Uh, Somewhere along the line, you just say it's beer 30. I'm going to go someplace and grab a couple beers. You need some peace and quiet and, and really start. This. So we're going to start. We're going to talk about the plan. Now, if you've got questions or if there's some things that I don't have on my list that you want to, you want to, you would put on your list, yell them out. That's, that's what we're, the idea is to, for, for you to really, really think about this. So, oh, that's right. I got the, I have the clicker. Um, choosing the branches. This is, what I, this is pretty much the way I did it. So your categories are going to be different. They might be the same. But the branches of the tree 
that I used were, were, were pretty much like this. First of all, what are those things that I used to know, but I've been working so damn hard for 35 to 40 years that I have forgotten all about them and I, I, I'm just not good at it anymore. And by golly, that's going to be some things I'm going to tackle. Um, that's what I'm going to relearn and engage. Uh, and I'll give you some examples of that in a little bit. And that was a big deal for me. That one well, it worked. And see, and I'm also talking, going to talk about learning new things. What are some new things you want to go learn? I'm going to give you some, again, some things that I, I learned. Um, travel and vacation. Um, that we'll, ha we'll probably have a little fun with that, because we probably have some real debates. What are the places we want to go and that sort of thing? I found, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about doing this with, with your spouse. This was probably the most fun that my, my, as we looked, we started doing a little bit of planning together. My wife and I had really quite a good time with uh, planning travel and vacation. Um, big deal, uh, staying um, or getting physically fit. We're going to talk about that very, very briefly as well. Um, and this group, probably preaching to the choir, so to speak, but you know, um, community activities and really, really giving back. And then family and the social network. Um, as you do your readings and you do your studies, this social network, is a big deal. Uh, that will have a direct impact on how long, quite frankly, how long you live. And uh, so the family and the social network is, is really, really going to be a, a, a big deal. I, I really just touch on it a little bit here in some of my falling comments, but uh, that's going to be really, really important. Any questions at this point? Anybody would have any tr additional branches? I'll show you how this works. And I have the clicker. OK. Learning and knowing, do, do some of this, remember the, the theme is wild, happy, and free. So this has got to be fun. Some of it's serious, but this is the way I approached it. Um, some new things. One of the things I was getting ready to go on the Indianapolis Symphony Board, and I know squat about classical music. So that is, uh, that's, that's on my list, and I'm working it a little bit. I, if uh, anybody knows who Marianne Tobias is, uh, Marianne Tobias has a book out there. She actually wrote some years ago about getting over the intimidation of, of classical music. So I'm doing that and, and trying to get a little bit more up to date here. Um, brew beer. I want to I wanna, I wanna brew beer. I wanna, I'd like to be fairly good at it. I have made one attempt. Uh, tasted okay, but when you opened it, it just, it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> It was well fun. So uh, that, is, that is in process, and all of the stuff is in the basement, irritating my, uh, my wife. To some, my wife's name is B, so I'll probably refer to her. But she made some comment the other day about all the bottles and everything that's sitting in the basement. So uh, I'm just starting that. But I would like to be able to brew, uh, get pretty good at brewing beer. Great. Uh, I, that's, that's where I went. It's going to be called Beckerbrow, is what it's going to be called. <laughs> Um, crazy as it sounds, uh, I have this desire. I would like to be able to make Jesus, learn how to do that, it's specifically mozzarella cheese. And I keep saying over and over, I haven't done this yet, over and over and over, I want to make mozzarella cheese and I'll go, go from there. But I've been busy with some other things. And you know, it's a long life, so you've got to save some of these things. Um, uh, you notice the theme with drinking and food here, you'll notice pretty soon. <laughs> um, so uh, wine course, and, uh, which I haven't done. I'd love, like to go to, you know, have a really good wine course and spend some time uh, in a cooking class. We have done that. We were, we, my wife and I had the most wonderful experience in, uh, in Tuscany and the old part of uh, Siena where we cooked a four-course meal, um, Italian meal, and spent the day with a, a, a renowned cook and who spoke no English and her assistant, my wife, my wife and I. One of my skills, I can tell you, is not rolling out pasta. I can tell you that. But, but that's on the list. I would also like, at one point in time, I, just, I would like to be a certified financial planner and take some financial planning courses. I have uh, not really achieved that. And, um, you know, improving my Word and Excel skills. Uh, you know, when I worked at Deloitte, I had people that did that. Uh, I didn't get so good at it. So, so those are some of the things that what I did is, is, is then I, I really sit down and say, so what are the things, what are the, what are the things that, you know, some of the new things that I really, really, really want to learn? Um, anybody else have some things that you would throw into that category? Everybody wants to brew beer. Yeah? Learning the Latin names for uh, local Yeah, you know, 
Uh, and, be, and for me, just being able to recognize and be able to do the, 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 the regular names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. So one of the things I did today is I filled all the bird feeders. And uh, I, I have a lot of different kind of birds, but I don't know what they all are. That's good. Anybody else? I mean, it's, everything's, everybody's going to be a little bit different. But if you go with this format and make sure you split them between some fun things and some serious things, Okay, so relearn and re-engage some old skills and some activities. Uh, that was, as I mentioned, was a pretty big deal with me. Um, there were, uh, I really did work really, really hard for, and as you have, I worked for 35, 40 years, and there were just some things that I, you know, I just wanted to re-engage in and learn and get smarter. First of all, and this is really more on the social thing, I have a dad that turns 90 really quick. And so that's really high on my, he turns in May, I think he, he turns 90, and spending some more time with dad. Uh, that is, is, is really, really, and that actually compelled me to retire. A, one of the things that caused me to retire a little bit early, if I decided, you know, I could have made more money in a couple more years, but had something happen, I would, it just wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been so good. So, uh, and then more time with my sons, uh, my two sons and the grandchildren. As a matter of fact, the grandchildren are coming over. To, they're going to spend the night, the two of them that live here, they are seven and four. And they'll be spending the night. And, and the tradition is we always take them to Steak and Shake. So we'll be taking to Steak and Shake at 6 o'clock. I've got to be out of here at, up at north at 6 o'clock. <laughs> and um, the other part of the tradition is they, we get up in the morning and I make my world-famous chocolate chip waffles. And um, so uh, that's, those are things that are important. And, and I suspect those will be, you know, some version of those will be on your list as well. Um, I enjoy working out in the yard. And so uh, really getting back into spending more time out in the yard. And my wife, I'm going to talk a little bit about how important, you know, you know working with your spouse is. My wife and I are not in agreement. I want to grow hops. And uh, my wife does not want me to grow hops. <laughs> and it would be in the back year, so backyard. So, so we are, in, if you know what hops, they grow a zillion feet high. You almost need to put them on a telephone pole. And I've said, well, we could put them, drape them, kind of drape them over the house. Like keep <laughs> And um, so, so that, one's, that one's really not going real well. That, that one's really not going really, really, really well. Um, and then saying, I, that was, one of the things that was big for me was also to say thanks to the people that, uh, that helped me out. And I would encourage you to do that, but do it quickly. I had the unfortunate, ex one of my biggest mentors at Deloitte, before I got a chance to, to talk with Jerry and say thanks, he passed away. So. Uh, do that, but that's one you want to do. I used to be very fluent in Spanish, lived in Mexico, studied Mexico, was a, was a, was a Spanish major, and that's, that was back in 1970, 1970. It's been a long time, and I'd like to get back to it. So, um, and reading books, that is really fun for me. I rotate uh, the history and the spy novels, and, and uh, if you want some names of some authors, I'm happy to sh get some other names of some, some really good authors of the spy novels. Be happy to, to share those with you. But I have, uh, I have a lot of fun with that. I have the clicker. Um, staying in shape. I just uh, put that on your list. That has to be one of your trees. And uh, my specific goals is, is that... Um, um, that I want to run four miles in every state, and I have I have five to go. I'm gonna we 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 um, just we, my wife and I are just working up a trip to knock out the Dakotas, Nebraska, and the Wyoming, and that'll leave me uh, it, with Alaska. So that's one of my goals to run four miles in every state. I'm not running as fast as I used to, but I'm doing taking up biking. That's something that being uh, we we do together, and that's been that's been fun. Um, weight training for seniors. Um, give serious thought to that. There is a very good book here, uh, and I would encourage you to, to read it in retirement. It's called Younger Next Year, and there's also a, a version for females. Anybody read it? Um, the, the, uh, one, of the, one of the big ahas in there is that most uh, seniors, as we get older, one of the biggest causes of, um, uh, of injury, and quite frankly death, is people falling off curbs and falling down steps. One of the things I, I remember in there is Weight training, especially, especially your calves, and um, and there's this is a very very good book. Very inter it's actually pretty entertaining, but it does talk about some about nutrition and um, and and some weight training and, the, and and that sort of thing. So I would encourage you. That would be my non-negotiable with you is to make sure that you 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 put that on there. Um, 
then I, I think then the other thing, I, one of the things that did surprise me, I thought I would play a lot more golf. I have not, but I would like to get to the point where I can get into the 80s with some regularity without cheating. Yes, <laughs> gimme's, you know, yes. Okay. Are you kidding me? <laughs> tell, tell me. <laughs> so, so who's doing that? Where is it? I've never heard of it. Okay. Well, let's do that. Let's do that. Because that'd be something. That'd be a perfect thing for us, and we'll talk a little bit about the United Way website. Perfect thing to get up on the United Way website. How fun! How fun! I know of some seniors that are, you know, doing some, playing some soccer, which. Uh, huh? Yeah, Mike. <laughs> um, I was actually well. <laughs> I I used to play. Uh, when I, was, uh, when I was working with Deloitte, and I lived up in, uh, if anybody's familiar with the Brookshire, you, you, Lee, you would you'd be familiar with up in Carmel. There's a golf course there, and we would play Monday nights, the neighbors. And um, uh, so oftentimes I just couldn't make it, or else I'd come screaming around 465, about 90 miles an hour, so I could you know, get, up on the, you know, get up there and, and hit, hit. And so one time I called a, told a guy it, in, in the office, I said, you know, I'm not going to be able to make my, my, my golf group on a Monday night, can you go up there? And he was always prepared to play golf. He, he was always in his trunk. He was ready. He goes up there, gets ready to tee off and to talk. He's with my next door neighbor. And he says, well, what? what's Mike's handicap? And Butch was, Butch was his name. He said, well, it's 17. And Dan says, well, my goodness, Mike says he's a bad golfer. Is that 17? He's not so bad. And my neighbor looked at him and he says, but that's for nine holes. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can tell, I have some work to do. And I'm still working on this concept of walking versus uh, being in the cart. So yeah, it, it, like I said, it's a non-negotiable. Uh, You've got to put that in there. Uh, any, anybody else, any other ideas on what you, what you would suggest? Those are just some basics. This isn't all the things I had on my list. but um, So I have the clicker. Um, some travel and, uh, travel and vacations. Um, these are some of the things we could, you know, we could really, really have some, have some fun with. Uh, these are some of the things. My wife and I really had a good time putting these things down. But it was, and you, again, you'll probably start to sense a little bit of a, of a, of a, uh, a trend here. But uh, we did this. We have a longer list. And one of the things that really hit us is if you, if you, if you put this, if you, if you have this list, and then you say, okay, I'll probably do, do pretty well until I'm about you know, pick a number, 75, 80, and you start to look at the list, that's when you kind of go, holy moly, I need to get started. Because your list will be long, time's going to be short. And, uh, you know, it's intuitive, but it was, it was a little bit of a, a, a bit of a surprise for me. Um, I, I was, was going to go, and I was, there was a, a place here, I think I missed something that I really would like to, uh, uh, try to figure out where the slide was, that I'm going to go and, and uh, fill something in here. Um, and, it, and it was, I, there was a slide back there. We talked a little bit about, you know, getting your arms about retirement. What I really did, didn't really talk about as much was uh, talking with your spouse. And there was, a, uh, there was something up there. Uh, I say it facetiously, and it's, uh, I married you for better or worse, but not for lunch. <laughs> and uh, that, is, that was kind of the tagline that was on that, that earlier slide, the importance <laughs> of, of talking with your spouse. Um, some interesting stories, and, and, and one of the stories, Barbara, I was, I was going to tell you is, is uh, people started coming up to my wife, and, and she says, well, how, they would ask her, well, how do you feel about him retiring? And the matter of fact, people turned out, people I think were more worried about her than they were about me getting in, re in retirement. But so she started getting a little bit nervous, and she was the ask around. Then she hears a story about a Lily exec. Who, who retired, obviously, I do not know the name, I wouldn't say it if I did, but uh, that she was hearing this story that what he would do is he would have certain times during the day when he was retired home, there had to be complete silence in the house. <laughs> and his wife, who liked to listen to the radio, because she, she had, had, had not worked or she was at home, so 
all of a sudden there had to be silence, complete silence in the house for these hours in, this, in the house. And she's used to listen to the radio all day. So she was telling the story that she'd have to go into the laundry room and kind of cuddle up in the corner. And, and so my wife starts getting really, she starts getting really, she starts to get really, really nervous about, you know, about this. And, um, and then uh, one of the things I got some advice from, from my wife uh, as we were talking about this, uh, uh, she, you know, about this whole thing about being kind of joined at the hip, you really probably want to have some of your own interests specifically. But one of the things she told me, and she, she, you know, funny thing, she continues to tell me, she said, when you were at Deloitte, you had people. You had people to make your reservations. You had people to do this and this and this. And she looked me right in the eye, and she, she continues to do this. And I'm not your people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not your people. I say that facetiously, but if you don't do it right, it can be a big deal. And, um, and so, uh, and I would rebuild the slides, I probably would put something up there that says, I'm not your people. So I, I wanted to re regress a little bit. And so what we've done here is we've gone through things like learning new things, uh, you know, re-engaging with some things, travel, getting fit. And, and so you, you put all these, you, you make all this list. And this is what I was doing, was I was making this list. And then I, then I ultimately then came to probably my aha moment. And this is, again, you can do it your own way, but this is a very abbreviated version of my, my retirement tree. Um, some people, uh, and I also have a version that's just, quite frankly, just a list with you know, the different topics in the list. But then I started sitting back and I said, okay, brewing beer, spend some time with my dad, you know, grow hops, you know, run four miles in every state, take up biking, uh, you know, getting over to Italy and get, getting the, has anybody been to Cinque Terre? Great place, I'll, I'll be, uh, great place uh, in, in Italy. And then, and then getting to the wine regions and, and, and you know, you think of all the other things. And, and then my moment really, quite frankly, was this, and then we also, we also put it on a Word document and places I want to travel to, spend time with dad, you know, all those different things. And I looked at this list and for me, I said, it was just kind of like, aha, I'm, I'm ready, and the sooner I retire, the better, because I've got a lot of things I've got to get done. And some of these are going to be really, really most of these are going to be really, really fun. They're going to be very fulfilling things. And, and, and probably when I got to here, again, this is abbreviated version, that was my aha moment. And um, that's what I would submit to you, that that's, this is really, really an important thing to, to really, really do. Any questions at this point? This was, this was a fun exercise. A uh, couple things about the United Way. The United, Ma United Way we do have, uh, we're putting together, as, as Lisa said, a, a, a Retire United website. Be we're working on having to make sure we've got a really good list of uh, books and materials. I've recommended a couple to you. Um, we would really appreciate any thoughts and ideas, but what we have in the back of our mind is also the speaker bureaus to talk a little bit about financial <laughs> considerations, what's your number, uh, maximizing Medicare. I am just diving into Medicare. Oh my gosh, um, that, that is, that's quicksand and, and easy to mess things up. Social security strategy, strategies and also cyber risk uh, for seniors. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty big deal. So those are some things that we're, the United Way is we're really committed to helping, helping retirees and pre-retirees as you're thinking through it. And we'll have a, a blog and then we'll actually have a, a, a copy of this book for you, which I think you'll really, really uh, enjoy. Uh, some final thoughts. I'll take some questions. Um, may or agree or disagree with some of these things. I would highly suggest, if you can, retire in the spring or the summer. <laughs> Uh, for the obvious reasons, uh, if, if you're not sure, if you, don't, if you don't have a plan, you don't know what you're going to do, and then all of a sudden you retire January 1st, and it's cold, you can't get outside, <laughs> um, it, it, yeah, so, so, yeah, you just can't get out. So, it, to the extent that you can retire in the spring or the summer, I would highly, highly suggest it. As I said before, yes? That, that's true. That's true. My wife, Mike's heard this story, my wife had hers uh, fairly recently. 
we actually had some birds fly in our house, and we were chasing the birds with the door open, trying to get them out, and she <coughs> fell, broke her hip. So sometimes you, you, know, sometimes you don't have the... <laughs> um, but know your number. Know your number. And uh, get, in, get in shape. Get in shape. Get in shape. Um, another piece of advice that I got was, uh, as you retire, don't make any big financial moves in the first, you know, three, four, two, three, four, five years. And the advice that I got, and it was very, very good, is a lot of people retire, and all of a sudden they want to set up these trusts and irre irrevocable trusts, et cetera, and they do it early before they, get a, they, before they land into their spending patterns and know what they want to do. And they're, they're irrevocable trusts. What's the key word there? <laughs> irrevocable. And um, there are a number of stories of people who, 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 who move too quickly. Settle into your spending levels and get a sense of what you're spending and give it, give it a little bit of time. Don't, don't go crazy with, uh, with some of the financial planning ideas. Um, do remember that, um, I say it facetiously, but I married you, you know, for, for better or worse, not for lunch. And that's you know, the, the, the working with your, with your spouse and, and some of the things that we talked about. And, um, Best thing about retirement, no more Sunday nights. I, I assume everybody, everybody, yeah, no more Sunday nights. A, a good friend of mine, Deloitte, uh, I asked him that question, Denny Fitzgerald from our Cincinnati office. I said, Denny, what's the best thing about retirement? He just looked at me, got this big smile on his face and said, no more Sunday nights. That's a big deal. It is. Yeah. Our version of that is every day is Saturday. Every day. <laughs> Um, that, that's, that's, that's really, really good. And you know, there are some statistics that say there, because uh, a lot of people, you probably late Sunday nights, you start to kind of tense up and, and all that. There are some statistics that say that heart attacks and a lot of things, uh, you know, happen on Sunday nights. So, ah, no more Sunday nights. <laughs> so I believe I have the clicker. If I, that, that, should, that is my presentation. Any questions or comments? Uh, again, to give you some perspective, Use that, use that, come up with your, your branches of your tree, build the tree, build the list, have some fun with it, do some things out of the box, some things serious, and I would tell you, when you do it, and when you finally sit down and look at it, you just, you, most of you will get to the point where you say, I'm there, I'm ready to do it, and I gotta do it now. Questions, comments? Anybody done something like this? Uh, I'm about five years, about five and a half years into it. I would say I probably got pretty comfortable after about, I, th I probably got comfortable with three and then four made me a little more comfortable. I'm pretty comfortable what our, sp you know, our spending levels is. And that, and that includes, you know, having a sense of what you might, might possibly, you know, give to the children. And, and uh, what I, if I have, um, it's going to sound a little self, but what is, it's going to sound a little, uh, um, conceited or whatever. But anyway, one of the things I think where I've, I, where I've had some uh, things I did not anticipate is my charitable contributions when it were a lot higher than I thought they were going to be when I first did it. And, um, um, but you know, that's, that's probably been my biggest surprise, quite frankly, is the level of my charitable contributions because I've gotten involved with some things and have developed some real passions for some things. And I've probably spent uh, out to the point where my financial advisor did when I told him to transfer some stock over to certain charities, he said, Mike, maybe we need to talk. <laughs> so <laughs> um, anyway, so I need to get that under control a little bit. Other, some other questions. Anybody, been, again, been through something like this? Yeah, Lee? Uh, I got some comments about uh, linking a couple of things. Um, like you mentioned uh, staying in shape. Uh, fitness is important if you're going to do some things like play golf. Yeah. Uh huh. You fall, you're screwed. No, it's going to down a big slope. So I stopped skiing, and you know what? My fitness attitude stuck. I stayed down. I never thought about it until today, and I was thinking about it. Mm -hmm. awesome. And there's there's so many different in, and I'm good ways to do it. Yeah, get 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 read this book. Yeah. But it's very important. Mm hmm.
Mm -hmm. That's right. <clears throat> well, I would tell you, at the risk of being a little, sounding a little coarse, uh, we're all going to kick. You know, that's the way it's that's the way it is. And uh, a lot of the theory behind this book is that's going to happen. And here you are now. Here's you know here's the day. And we all have a choice as to whether our quality of life is going to go like this, or is it going to go like this, or, you know, you can actually, by getting back in shape, you can actually regress a little bit, you can actually get a little bit younger uh, physically, hence the title of this book, and I'm a big, big believer in that. That's why I kind of put my foot down in, in making sure that that's a big deal. I think you had a question. Comment. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Having having a, a good sense for that, it does it, it does. And you know, I can tell you, you know, I run the numbers, and it's there, so, so, or some cushion. You're always going to be antsy and goosey about do you have enough? Is the market going to go down? You're never going to get over that. But it's important to at least know what your number is, and and, uh, and it's not that you know. It all starts with what what are you going to spend and. Uh, what, or what are you spending now, quite frankly, and that's easy to do. You add up your, your credit cards and some, add some checks and that's categorize them and that gives you a pretty good sense. So that's a good point. So you know, I talked a little bit about charitable, uh, charitable contributions and especially with this group. Uh, I think it's also important as you, get into, as you do get into retirement that you, know, you, you, you do continue with charitable giving. The United Way you know, is, is obviously a, a, a really, really good place and there's a lot of different things about concepts and ideas and strategies about charitable giving and retirement. There's a lot of people in the room here that could sure help you out. You know, you've got the required minimum distributions to hit you when you're age 70. And, you know, uh, a lot of some people are saying, I don't need that money, but you got to pay tax on it. Well, there's a way to give it directly to charity. And there are also a lot of your employer uh, employers who will have, still have matching gifts as you when you retire. I would encourage you to talk with somebody from the United Way and make and, and you know, can use that because that's that's a very 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 powerful uh, a very very powerful tool. So uh, again, there's some people that can really help you. And and, and planned giving is is uh, is also a, a really very, really big powerful thing. There's a lot of one of the things you'll really start to, you'll you'll think about a lot when you retire is do you give the money now or do you do you wait and make it more planned <coughs> giving? And I I my there's there's a lot of different schools of thought there. You can obviously spend, you could give money now to a fault um, because you still have to, you know, you still have a number that you do. So I think there's a balance there of, of, of giving some money now, you know, utilizing the, uh, the, the, um, the matching that's available to you, but then also some, some planned giving as well. So you'll, you'll find, you'll find it, you'll find it especially with, we find it a lot with respect to the, our children. Um, how much do you give now? Uh, how much, you know, how much do you, you know, because you can over, you can do that to a fault. Uh, I'm reading a good book. I've, anybody read The Millionaire Next Door? I just, it's a, it's an old, old book, but I'm just, just reading it. And it would say, don't give so much money to, to your, to, to the, uh, to the family right now, to the, to the children. So that'll be a, that'll be something that you run into as well, is uh, that sort of thing. So that concludes. Uh, Lisa, any, again, any questions or comments? There's, there's a free copy of the book. Oh, go ahead. I'll let you conclude and just wild, happy, and free. <laughs>